So, uh, well friends, uh, now this is our module 12, the last module of this course and lecture 30 here. These three lectures of module 12 will be devoted to emerging issues in sociology of population. The purpose is to sensitize students to certain changes that are taking place in the policy of the country and in the general intellectual climate at the international and national levels, general changes in theorization about population issues and what kind of new questions are being asked by planners, demographers, sociologists uh, which are related to population dynamics. So, there will be three lectures on this and today is the beginning of that module. Today specifically we will talk about two things, Millennium Development Goals, the National Population Policy 2000. So, you know, as uh, one can see that all the ideas belong to their age and as time changes depending on socio economic, political, environment, culture, religious changes, human beings have been posing different problems for solution and that can be said to be happening in the field of population also. The kind of problems which the demographers or sociologists of population are solving today are very different from the problems which they did identify or they, they solved about say 30 years back or 50 years back or 100 years back. Because historical developments lead to new concerns among intellectuals and planners. In the 21st century, sociologists of population are exploring therefore, some new issues. Days are over when sociologists of population were involved primarily in model building or estimation of birth and death rates from incomplete or unreliable data. About uh, 35 years ago when I entered this field of population as a student, I remember that the most important issues of population research at that time were estimation of birth and death rates at the national level. I still remember how Rayleigh method or UN methods were applied to do these kinds of estimations for the country as a whole and later on for different states. So, we learned about stable population methods, we learned about uh, statistical methods of numerical analysis, graduation, forecasting, model building and most of the first generation population academicians in the country were statisticians, mathematicians and uh, some were economists. Today the situation is completely changed. Today this field of population is open more for uh, sociologists because and to some extent psychologists also because uh, we are now raising more of substantive issues rather than the issues of estimation. All major things that we wanted to know by building statistical models or by using techniques of estimation from incomplete or unreliable data, they are not needed anymore. You have plenty of data from census, new questions have been added and refinements have been made in census questions, then you have NSSO you have national family health surveys, reproductive and child health surveys at the district level and many other national and sub national surveys conducted by research organizations such as ORG, Nelson, Population Council and now the issues 
are more regarding explaining the existing demographic trends rather than estimation of rates and ratios. How it differ from demography is same. Okay. So, I mean, what is demography? Whether it's same population sociology or something? In the very first lecture, perhaps on that day you were not present. I made a distinction between demography and population studies. Demography includes quantitative study of demographic processes, fertility, mortality, migration, social mobility and marriage and its methodology is largely mathematical and statistical. Population studies focuses more on relationship between population variables on the one hand and socio-economic cultural and political variables on the other. So, this population studies part is closer to sociology than the demography. You know, like in demography, you are preparing the life table of India. What is exactly the life expectancy of birth in India today based on statistical data obtained from sample registration scheme or census. But a population sociologist is more interested in issues like what is the relationship between say economic inequality and life expectancy, substantive issues or will the improvement in gender equality improve the life expectancy at birth in India or what are the causes of declining sex, juvenile sex ratio, these are the substantive issues. So, there are new experiences in implementing programs and policies and there are also new discourses on development and population. This has produced new research initiatives and new ideas and we will discuss them today. Among them, one of the most important things is millennium development goals. I think today all sociologists, whether they are working in the field of population or not, must familiarize themselves with the idea of millennium development goals. This is one major factor that has changed the discourse on population in this century. This is a framework of development and therefore, some attention has to be paid to this. Also because there is a close resemblance in the millennium development goals framework and the national population policy 2000. One can see that NPP 2000 sharply reflects the millennium development goals. Now, there are 8 millennium development goals. Millennium development goals are created by an international body of statesmen during the UN Millennium Summit in September 2000. 189 nations adopted millennium declaration. They committed themselves by signing that yes, they are committed to achievement of millennium development goals. The declaration was signed by 147 heads of the states and governments. The millennium development goals are drawn from the actions and targets contained in that declaration. All this information is available on net for history, background, which are these countries, what are the goals. <coughs> you can get information from UN sites. Now, these goals uh, must be achieved by 2015. So, a target was set that there are 8 goals and these goals must be achieved by 2015 that respond to world's main development challenges. These 8 goals are further divided into 21 quantifiable targets that are measured by 60 indicators. So, when we talk of millennium development goals, we are referring to 8 goals and in under these 8 goals, we have 21 targets and 60 indicators. In this one hour time, we, because we have to talk a little bit about population policy or how um, MDGs are related to policy, I will not be able to talk about everything, but I will just give you a glimpse of what these millennium development goals are. India is a signatory to millennium development goals. Goal 1, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Goal 2, achieve universal primary education. Nobody will dispute the importance of poverty removal and raising 
educational enrollment rates. Now, third goal is quite important for sociologists like us. This is promote gender equality and empower women. One can also say that it is after declaration of MDGs that uh, more and more social scientists including sociologists have started working on these issues because we are committed to them and not as one nation only. Uh, a large number of nations are signatories to uh, MDGs which were accepted by a still larger group of countries of United Nations. The fourth goal is reduce child mortality. Fifth goal is improve maternal health. Now, these are goals, but what does health mean? What are in indicators of health? In what respect we fix target that we will see a little later. Goal 6 deals with combat HIV AIDS, malaria and other diseases. So, obviously, because they are naming HIV AIDS and malaria. So, major focus of combating diseases is on HIV AIDS and malaria. Here I should also say that these are not country specific goals. These are the goals which all countries, all those who are signatory to MDGs have committed to achieve these goals. That means, if uh, signatories to these countries and all those other countries which support this achieve these goals, then we are going to achieve these goals at the world level, global level. Goal 7 ensure environmental sustainability. We have already spent nearly 3 lectures on environmental issues and we have seen what kind of environmental problems are being created today due to a faulty model of development, urbanization, industrialization. Goal 8 is about develop a global partnership for development. So, there are some uh, social goals and there are some goals regarding how to achieve those social goals. First goal is uh, mostly economic poverty. In sociology, we are more concerned about uh, social goals of, or goals of social development, education, gender equity, child mortality, maternal health and demographers would be particularly interested epidemiologists, demographers, they will be particularly interested in HIV AIDS, malaria and other diseases. Then there is something about environmental sustainability and then wage, wage global partnership, international, bilateral collation, public private partnership, United Nations organizations, multilateral, international state organizations. When it comes to indicators, a cursory reading of the goal shows that all the MDGs are of great relevance to population. First of all, we must recognize this. Okay. I will also show you some figures regarding what was the situation and what we want to aim at. The first goal aims at reduction in unemployment, poverty and malnutrition. So, in terms of indicators for the first goal, first goal was removal of uh, or reduction in poverty and hunger. This poverty and hunger goal contains indicators like reduction in unemployment, poverty means head count ratio of poverty or what we call level of poverty or extent of poverty or poverty ratio and malnutrition. Since uh, you will wonder why malnutrition with unemployment, because this is because goal 1 is about poverty and removal of hunger. Now, hunger does not mean uh, that only those uh, who are so hungry that if they are not given food today, they will die. Hunger also includes malnutrition. Therefore, goal 1 has indicators of unemployment, poverty and malnutrition. The second goal regarding education aims at raising school enrollment rate and literacy rate separately among men and women. Merely improvement in literacy at the aggregate level is not enough. We must raise school enrollment rate and literacy rate separately among men and women. The third goal aims at you know regarding gender and empowerment of women. The third goal aims at improving ratios of girls to boys in primary, secondary and tertiary education separately. Primary uh, up to 8th standard, secondary up to 12th standard and tertiary graduation and above. 
at all levels we want to improve ratios of girls to boys then share of women in wage employment which is very low in the non agricultural sector and proportion of seats held by women in national parliament you can see that connection between millennium development goals and the demand for reserving certain seats for women in the parliament the fourth goal is to reduce these are two uh, indicators infant mortality child mortality so the fourth goal is to reduce infant and child mortality and increase proportion of one year old children immunized against measles so there is an element of immunization also first we want to reduce infant mortality means mortality of children in the age group 0 to 1 year child mortality 0 to 5 or 1 to 5 if you exclude infant mortality then 1 to 5 and then immunization and this is obvious that once children are immunized against measles then they are also immunized against many other diseases for which vaccination exists indicator includes measles the fifth goal aims at reducing maternal mortality ratio and proportion of births attended by skilled health personnel because there is a close connection between them in one of the lectures i was telling you that uh, it is difficult to reduce maternal mortality ratio as compared to uh, reducing infant and child mortality there are many countries where infant mortality and child mortality ratios or rates have come down but maternal mortality ratio is still remains high india is one of those countries where maternal mortality ratio is high you require special efforts to reduce maternal mortality ratio the facilities and developmental factors which can reduce infant mortality and child mortality which which are part of the fourth goal are not enough to reduce maternal mortality ratio something has to be done especially to reduce maternal mortality ratio and one of the factors being proportion of births attended by trained nurse or midwife or safe delivery so this fifth goal includes uh, not only reducing maternal mortality ratio but also proportion of births attended by skilled health personnel as home delivery lack of emergency care often leading to postpartum hemorrhage when there is lack of emergency care the percentage may be small percentage may be 2% 3% but in per 1000 terms it becomes 20 2% means 20 per 1000 so when there is a lack of emergency care either because delivery does not take place in an institution or it takes place at home in absence of a trained nurse or midwife and there is postpartum hemorrhage pps and there is no uh, knowledge or facility of transportation no roads or no van no car no telephone numbers no information or no motivation to take women to the nearest psc or csc then this postpartum hemorrhage often leads to death of the mother so these are two major causes of maternal death and the fifth goal aim set reducing them the fifth goal also calls for universal access to reproductive health which implies all these are actually interconnected maternal health institutional delivery safe delivery reproductive health reducing pph women's empowerment they are all interrelated so the fifth goal also calls for universal access to reproductive health which implies increasing contraceptive prevalence rate decreasing adolescent birth rate adolescent birth rate means uh, teenage pregnancy and teenage fertility teenagers are not biologically fit to produce a baby without any risk generally if you draw a graph of risk by age then initially in teens and in adolescent period chance of dying for a woman due to factors related to childbirth would be highest then it declines and beyond the age of say 30 or 35 it again starts increasing so if you want to reduce maternal mortality ratio you have to decrease adolescent birth rate due to low age of marriage and due to uh, heavy focus 
fertility that immediately after marriage women have to produce a baby they have to prove that they are fertile and there is stigma against women who have not produced child so you have high adolescent birth rate and this must be reduced if you want to reduce maternal mortality ratio then adolescent birth rate has to be reduced then improving antenatal care coverage indicated by antenatal care means registration of pregnancy home visits referral distribution of iron and phonic acid tablets providing all uh, knowledge regarding uh, safe delivery and in case there is any problem uh, hypertension or biological problem in carrying the conception uh, and in delivery that has to be attended to all these are part of antenatal care so um, antenatal care delivery care and uh, postnatal care women's care reproductive care is divided into three parts antenatal care before childbirth delivery care during childbirth and postnatal care after childbirth when pph or such problems may arise and then meeting unmet need for family planning this unmet need for family planning this i have already explained one day in connection with family planning program that this means that there are several couples who do not want any child but they are still not practicing any family planning methods at one time their percentage was around 20 now it it has declined to lower levels this is the unmet need so we want to meet the unmet need that those who do not want child they should know and they should be in a position to use an effective modern contraceptive method the sixth goal has several targets and indicators that also show the importance of the sixth goal halt and begin to reverse the spread of hiv aids halt in all those countries where hiv virus has been found number of hiv cases is increasing you know hiv must be halted and reverse the spread of hiv aids this means that the number of new infections should decline more and more people are protected against the risk of transmission of hiv from infected persons to uninfected persons the indicators are HIV prevalence among population aged 15 to 24 years it has been found that uh, proportion of HIV prevalence in younger age group 15 to 24 is increasing this is the time when knowledge is less empowerment is less there is a desire to engage in adventurous or risky behavior facilities are less access to contraceptive methods is less because of all the even when uh, ngos or civil society act, actors or volunteers go to rural areas they have a tendency to focus more on married couples in age group 30 and above or 25 and above at least 15 to 24 children teenagers adolescents young adults get ignored so hiv prevalence among them is increasing then condom use at last high risk sex this is another indicator what proportion of uh, people use condom at last high risk sex uh, what is high risk sex high risk sex is that in which chance of uh, getting hiv infection is high which may be in multi partner sex or in sex with female sex workers or male sex workers or msm behavior uh, so those engaging in high risk sex multi partner or um, msm or fsw uh, among them percentage of users of condoms must rise then proportion of population aged 15 to 24 again young adults with comprehensive correct knowledge of hiv aids right now the problem that we are facing in our country is that most people have heard about hiv aids but there is lot of misconception people do not fully understand about four modes of transmission of hiv they do not understand how can they save themselves from hiv aids and there are lots of misconceptions leading to various types of stigmas so there is a need to uh, develop comprehensive and correct knowledge of hiv aids in the age group 15 to 24 then ratio of school attendance of orphans 
to school attendance of non orphans aged 10 to 14 years. Lack of education, lack of attendance of orphans has been a problem, it is recognized as a problem. So, they want to bring uh, school attendance of orphans at par with the school attendance of uh, non orphans. Then achieved by 2010 universal access to treatment for HIV AIDS for all those who need it. That means, all those who are infected with HIV not all of them may need treatment there is a test C D 4 count who, uh, who have C D 4 count less than 200 they need to go for ART antiretroviral therapy. Some people who are not responding to ART anymore may require a more advanced therapy heart. Now, the indicator for this thing is proportion of population with advanced HIV infection with access to antiretroviral drugs this is one indicator that what proportion of HIV infected persons you can say with C D 4 count less than 200 have access to ART. Do they know where ART is available, how far is that place from their residence and how can they avail ART facility there? Is supply of ART regular? Are there difficulties in getting ART? Knowledge, knowledge of ART. Sometimes people do not take ART because of lack of knowledge and sometimes because uh, there may be problem with supply. We have seen both types of cases in our HIV surveys. Then heart and begin to reverse the incidence of malaria and other major diseases. So, under this goal there were three things HIV, malaria and other major diseases. For malaria they say indicators are incidence and death rates associated with malaria, proportion of children under 5 sleeping under insecticide treated bed nets proportion of children under 5 with fever who are treated with appropriate anti malarial drugs. Then incidence, prevalence and death rates associated with tuberculosis among other diseases you have tuberculosis. Tuberculosis uh, is closely linked with uh, HIV according to one estimate nearly 60 percent of those infected with HIV are likely to develop tuberculosis later when they have AIDS due to reduction in immunity system if they come in contact of tuberculosis virus bacteria they develop tuberculosis more easily than those who are not suffering from HIV. Proportion of tuberculosis cases detected and cured under directly observed treatment short course DOTS program. Government of India now includes DOTS, now, DOTS takes less time and DOTS is more effective and it has been found that in treatment of tuberculosis DOTS is more effective than the traditional type of treatment. So, another advantage of uh, this directly observed treatment is that uh, patient, uh, patients are able to consult the doctors, doctors can see the patients more regularly and prescribe the medicines according to their stage of development of tuberculosis. The seventh goal aims at sustainable development. This is about environmental issues, climate change and this aims at sustainable development, pollution control, improving water and sanitation facilities and reduction in proportion of urban population living in slums. These are the indicators. Indicators of sustainable development, pollution control, air, water, noise, improving water and sanitation facilities and reduction in urban population living in slums. Now, we have lot of data on urban population living in slums from Indian censuses. Finally, the eighth goal aims at changing international terms of trade in favor of developing countries, debt relief, access to affordable essential drugs on a sustainable basis and improving information and communication facilities with the cooperation of private sector. So, this talks of economic measures, this talks of regular supply, this talks of information and communication and with uh, partnership of private sector that there are certain things which private sectors can do much better 
private sector is more flexible, rigid rules which apply to government machinery do not apply to them and uh, the public private partnership. Now, MDG goals in India, we have made a table which actually this table reproduces table 1 of millennium development goals India country report which was prepared in 2005. We could collect indicator wise more recent data, but this was one table where at one place I could find information on different indicators. So, I am just uh, reproducing that. The report was prepared by Ministry of Statistics and Program Evaluation, Central Statistical Organization, Government of India and the table presents values and targets of 16 indicators of different goals, not one different goals. Let us look at this table. The first indicator proportion of population below poverty. In 1990, roughly 37.5 percent population of India was living below the poverty line. In 1999-2000, the percentage reduced to 26.1. So, there is a reduction of more than 11 points poverty ratio. The MDG value is that we have to bring it down to 18.75 percent. These are all ambitious goals undernourished people as percentage of total population which was 62.2 percent in 90 reduced to 53 percent and we have to reduce it further to 31.1 percent. Again a very ambitious target for reducing undernourishment government policies are certainly important, but you also have to have a certain level of development and redistributive measures. Proportion of undernourished children which was 54.8 percent in 90 reduced to 47 percent in 98. We have to reduce it further to 27.4 percent. Literacy rate in 15 to 24 age group which was 64.3 90 has already come up to 73.3 percent uh, in 2001 and this has to be raised to 100 percent. Everybody should be everybody should be literate in 15 to 24 age group everybody should be literate. Perhaps it will be easier to attain this goal of 100 percent from 73.3 to 100 percent as compared to some other goals which are of economic or morbidity related goals. Uh, ratio of girls to boys in primary education 0 0.71 in 1991 means in primary education on every 100 boys you had only 71 girls. This was raised to 78 in 2001 and this has to be raised to 100 percent by 2015. Ratio of girls to boys in secondary much more dismal. It was only 0 0.49 in 1991 raised to 63. So, on every 100 boys you had 63 girls in secondary education this has to be raised to 1 for all uh, for 100 boys in secondary education we want to see that there are also 100 girls equal number of girls. Under 5 mortality rate under 5 mortality in uh, 88 to 92 period was 125 per 1000 live births it reduced to 98 and we have to bring it down to 41 this would be these uh, indicators would be somewhat difficult to achieve. Infant mortality rate we have to bring it down to 27 the present level uh, means level in 2003 was around 60 and it has to be brought down to 27. Our record in uh, reducing maternal mortality rate is particularly frustrating you see in 91 maternal mortality ratio was 437 in 98 it reduced a bit it came down to 407 and this has to be brought down to 109 most ambitious. I do not exactly know what is our level 2010, but based on my reading of different papers on the matter I can say that it is still hanging around 300. So, from 300 you have to bring it down to 109 in a very short duration and this is something which require intervention at various levels household level, village level, block level, district level there are certain things which the district health authorities have to do there are certain things which families have to do there are certain things 
which village health and sanitation committees have to do. And when all of them households, communities, villages, blocks, districts and states work together, then only it is possible to reduce maternal mortality to 109. Then population with sustainable access to improved water source, we seem to be having good record of this. In 2005, 90 percent population had access to improved water source and the goal was only 80.5. Then uh, population with sustainable access to an improved water source in urban areas, in 2001, 82.22 percent had access this has to be raised to 94. Population with access to sanitation, urban areas, the figure has to be raised to 72. In rural areas also, this has to be raised to 72. And here again a big challenge lies. Ministry has initiated lots of studies of sanitation, why people are averse to the idea of individual household latrines and very interesting findings have come up. So, uh, this is a big issue how to encourage people to change their habits and there are poverty issues, cultural issues, uh, village issues, gender issues, something has to be done drastically to achieve this. Deaths due to malaria, we do not want to see any death occurring due to malaria and at the moment per 100,000 population 0 0.09 deaths are taking place due to malaria. TB deaths are more in number for every 100,000 population means 1 lakh population 33 people are dying due to tuberculosis and this has to be brought down to 0 with the help of DOTS program. Deaths due to HIV AIDS in 2004 there were 1114 it has to be brought down to as minimum theoretically 0, but uh, as low number as possible. Now, the impact of MDGs on population policy has been like this. Focus attention of planners and development activists, search for reliable data on these indicators at national, state, district and block levels. Targets were set for evaluation of development programs, seminars, conferences, research agendas. Now, during last 10 years you find lots of universities and NGOs have organized conferences on MDGs at the national level, state level and some at the lower level. If uh, this has also given us a framework for health and population policy, there is more stress on entitlements and human rights approach rather than coercion, incentives and disincentives. This has expanded role for private initiatives, influence on the perspective of 10th, 11th 5 year plan that is another thing that we clearly see the impact of MDGs. This has helped us in putting the development agenda on top of family planning program and MDGs accord special importance to women empowerment, reproductive and child health and fighting HIV epidemic. General thinking on future possibilities is that MDGs are too ambitious. Looking at the available sources, state of governance in the country and the social environment, we may not be able to achieve all the MDGs as fixed in the millennium declaration. Some indicators will be fully achieved, some will be less achieved. Records of achieving of different indicator targets will vary from indicator to indicator, but one cannot deny the importance of the framework of MDGs. Whether you want to have population control or not, MDG are goals in themselves, goals of planning in themselves. Now, compare these MDGs with NPP National Population Policy 2000, reflecting the International uh, Conference on Population and Development Goals and MDGs in India. The National Population Policy 2000 has called for a more humane approach to population planning and for paying greater attention to social development with particular emphasis on improving education, reproductive health and unmet needs of slums and other special categories of population. One major factor of new thinking is the stress on three points. One, importance of area specific approach about which some academicians were arguing for a long time, persons of the stature of Ashish Bose have been talking about this thing for a long time. 
a need to recognize the importance of reciprocal relationship between population and development and acceptance of the fact that there could be multiple perspectives and social and organizational issues. Goals for facilities under NPP the goals of NPP 2000 are operationalized in terms of facilities for people. For example, the goals of reducing maternal mortality ratio has been translated into increasing institutional deliveries under National Rural Health Mission NHRM involving ASHAs. So, earlier you know, we have discussed uh, the draft uh, population policy of Dr. Karan Singh and then Janta draft. We have seen the emphasis was more on targets, on goals, visions, need, need to attain a high couple protection rate as soon as possible. But now in NPP 2000, attention has been shifted more towards operationalization of goals in terms of facilities, create more facilities, create more facilities for institutional deliveries, create more facilities for children. So, there is a paradigm shift in family planning. This box shows the paradigm shift in population policy in the 10th plan. Demographic targets to focus on enabling couples to achieve their reproductive goals, their reproductive goals. Then method specific contraceptive targets to meet the unmet needs for contraception to reduce unwanted pregnancies. Now, nobody will uh, dispute that unwanted pregnancies should be stopped Hindus or Muslims or young or old. Yes, if pregnancy is unwanted it should be stopped and uh, couples should have all the facilities to reduce unwanted pregnancies. Because if they have unwanted pregnancies then the consequences are more painful for them only. They will either produce babies or they will go for abortion. In both the cases they, they will have to bear the enormous cost of unwanted childbirth. Then numerous vertical program for family planning and maternal and child health to integrated health care for women and children. Family planning to health. Centrally defined targets to community need assessment and decentralized area specific micro planning and implementation of program for health care for women and children to reduce infant mortality and high desired fertility. High desired fertility existed because infant mortality was high, child mortality was high and couples uh, plan to produce more children than they desired because they thought that some of them might die. Then quantitative coverage to emphasis on quality and content of care. There is a shift in NPP 2000, you find a shift from quantitative coverage to quality and content of care, satisfaction, quality, quality of care, satisfaction of clients. Predominantly women centered programs which the family planning program was initially to meet the health care needs. Now, there is a shift to meet the health care needs of the family with emphasis on involvement of men in planned parenthood. Then supply driven service delivery to need and demand driven service, improved logistics, transport, information, uh, mobility for ensuring adequate and timely supplies to meet the needs. And lastly, service provision based on providers perception to addressing choices and conveniences of the couple. So, from supply to demand, supplies in the sense of facilities will be improved, but the, the program uh, must cater more to needs and conveniences of the couples rather than to philosophical, political and demographic ideas of the planners or providers, not providers. The couple should decide uh, what should be done. So, what is new in NPP? Uh, there are several new things in NPP 2000. A significant change in the national population policy 2000 has been the introduction of HIV AIDS. Before uh, this NPP 2000, population policy did not talk about HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS did not exist. The first case of virus in India was detected in 1986 somewhere in Chennai and after that there has been a gradual development. After NPP 2000, HIV AIDS became an integrated part of population policy. 
then uh, linking population dynamics to HIV AIDS has generated whole lot of new issues in the area of reproductive health like sexuality earlier nobody was talking about sexuality NPP 2000 made sexuality a new issue. So, our sociologists have uh, lots of new issues now to examine sexuality, sexual networking. <coughs> Not that in sociology studies of sexuality were lacking, you know, in sociology we talk of Kinsey's study of sexuality, but in India nobody uh, did a serious job of studying sexuality pattern, sexual networking. If you want to prevent HIV AIDS transmission from infected to unin uninfected persons through sexual routes, you, have, you must understand the sexual networking. Then male involvement in reproductive health, without male involvement in patriarchal, patrifocal family of India, you cannot fight the AIDS epidemic. Then mapping of high risk group, who are high risk group, where are they living, what is their number what is their mobility pattern in high risk group usually we include FSWs, MSM and intravenous drug users. We want to know, we must know their estimates at the national level, state level, district level, tehsil level, taluka level and village level. Where are they living, what is their number, what is the mobility pattern, what are their practices, what are their needs, then awareness of how aware they are of risk, they as well as the general population, how aware people are of risk, authority of women in decision making at family level and role of community support. It may be stressed that all these issues have led to disenchantment with positivism and scientism and establish importance of social constructivism, yielding self reports, qualitative studies and discourse analysis as methodological tools. So, in the beginning of this lecture, I said when I entered population uh, field as a student, then it was dominated by statisticians and mathematicians. Now, because of all these factors, millennium development goals, NPP 2000, new issues, methodologically more sociologists uh, would be using qualitative methods. Actually, there is uh, in research departments, research uh, institutions, there is much more demand for qualitative researchers today than for quantitative researchers. Although you must know a little bit of quantitative method, surveys etcetera, what is survey, structured, unstructured questionnaire, how to collect data, how to analyze data using SAS or SPSS, but there is a growing demand for qualitative research. Uh, situation analysis and mapping with involvement of community members rather than trained researchers have become the most important tools with donors and policy makers, participatory method. If mapping is to be done, uh, it has to be done using participatory methods. That is because the experts, uh, outsiders, experts, demographers, sociologists, field workers cannot arrive at uh, quick and uh, exact estimates of numbers of high risk groups without involvement of uh, the members of risk group themselves. So, participatory approach, but it is not so easy. We have done a study for NACO, National AIDS Control Organization and UNICEF in which we mapped high risk groups in Bihar, all the districts, all the talukas using participatory approach, very difficult. So, uh, qualitative approach, participatory uh, learning, these are some new tools which sociologists are uh, using more and more in studying new issues uh, related to population. Then through situation analysis, we can not only have the mapping of high risk groups, we can also learn a lot about socio-cultural context of HIV transmission, sexuality, risk behavior, comprehensive knowledge among people and the available support system from government and non-government sources. So, this is all I wanted to talk about. Today, if you have one or two questions in mind, please. Please, sir, it says that the Millennium, uh, the millennium Development Goal actually uh, they declared in 2000. Hmm. So, already actually 10 year is already completed. Hmm. Uh, so, that uh, originality was around uh, 60 indicators, right? hmm. but India developed around 16. But, uh, but after looking all the indicators, I think it is not much after 10 years, 
not much improvement. That as you rightly said that the second objective that is achieved the universal primary gene because now around 20, 2000 it is uh, I think 73. So there is there is a chance that we uh, reach that 100 or 90. But except all the seven goal, so I think so there should be how we can uh, achieve this kind of. Another point that's the sixth point that is uh, accessibility of anti anti retroviral therapy or the drugs. For India, as a kind of, I think in law, I have read so many reports that this kind of uh, drugs accessibility of these drugs is a very very much a, a problem. Uh, then as you really said that maternal mortality uh, also. So how far? How, so all okay. That's to some extent that's national population policy or the national rural health mission. Government started some program to achieve this kind of target. But it means that uh, I think should be country specific. Uh, so you mentioned that it around 190 countries are uh, signed this treaty adopted. So it is applicable to all the countries. But country like India, how far it, we will achieve? Already 10, 10 years is completed. So okay, it's good. The, the uh, actually. We are talking about this in the context of population policy that millennium development goals have influenced policy making in the field of population. As far as uh, uh, achievement of indicators is concerned, even if we did not have millennium development goals or we did not have population policy, there would be some improvement in them. Education ministry for example is already working to promote literacy, school enrollment rate and gender parity. Ministry of Rural Development is already was already working uh, to reduce uh, poverty ratio like this. Uh, all these things were already part of development planning. But this millennium development goals uh, have drawn attention towards certain specific goals of development that is one thing. And that has uh, that also means that there is uh, more attention of planners, academicians, uh, experts, journalists, civil society on these issues, uh, energies of government, civil society, academicians is more channelized towards attainment of these specific goals. Now, we may not be able to achieve uh, all the goals 100 percent, some goals will be achieved may be more than 100 percent, some goals will be achieved 90 percent, some goals will be achieved 60 percent. But this clearly shows that there is a change in thinking, there is a paradigmatic change in thinking on population issues in place of targets of birth rate, death rate etcetera or couple protection rate. We are talking more in terms of creation of facilities, so that people can meet their needs. So, uh, the shift is from uh, uh, provider driven approach to uh, client satisfaction what the people, what the couples want, what the clients want. So, in HIV also uh, uh, you know there is more focus on providing ART uh, or testing and counseling facilities. Uh, now, as far as testing and counseling facilities are concerned, I think uh, uh, we have wide network of testing and counseling facilities and at the district level, even at the lower than district level through rapid test, it is possible to provide facilities of this kind. ART, yes, ART uh, is not available in all the districts here and certainly not at the block or PSC level. Uh, maybe with improved funds, uh, recognition of need, uh, um, more of these facilities will be created at lower levels. Certainly, ART facilities should be created at the district level and if, uh, if possible, if money permits, if you know, ultimately to provide facilities at lower and lower levels, you need funds, you need infrastructure. In, in a country like India, combating HIV is okay, it's, should be uh, uh, an important word. But at the same time in here, the social stigma against HIV patient. You know, yeah, in that, that we should take, yeah. uh, I think. So, uh, stigma is another issue, issue. Uh, which has been identified in the recent past. And in the next lecture, we will talk about this thing. Thank you.